So with Module 26, we'll be getting new hunts, abyssal hunts, along with a new zone, Narbondalen. Now you'll start things off by picking up the quest Personal Summons from Sergeant Knox. Then you will need to head to the Whispering Post within Underdark. I don't believe you will have to have made any progress on Menza Barans in the campaign in order to unlock this area. I'm not 100% sure, you might need to. But you'll just go over to Jarlaxle, you'll hand in the quest there, and then pick up the quest Discreet Meeting. Here, you are going to be directed to the new zone, which is an extension to the city of Menza Branzen. It's a new district in the city itself, Narbondelen. That's at least how I'm going to be pronouncing it. And it looks pretty cool. It's tied to the module itself called Demon Web. Within here, you're going to speak to Nori, hand in the quest, and get two quests from her. And they're going to head you out to help injured mages and collect lost artifacts. So this place is a bit like, yeah, it's a city with streets, and it's really confusing, to be honest. But here on the map, we got to head to those circle areas, follow our sparkly line, it'll help a little bit. We go and we kill our first group of enemies. And yeah, we're fighting Drow. Now you may see something strange, the damage numbers. Yeah, throughout this video, you'll notice them. They have changed a little bit. They've been a bit abbreviated with having a K for a thousand and M for a million. So there we just picked up one artifact and now we have to kill these enemies and save this injured mage who's lying on the ground just there. We kill off the last guy and then we interact with him. And that gives us another progress on the second quest. So. We just do that a few more times, getting five out of five on both the quests, killing this last group of ads, and we can save this last injured mage. Now we just have to head back. We hand in both of those quests and she'll give us a new quest. She's also giving us currency for the campaign. We speak to her and she's going to direct us to an abyssal tear. You locate it, interact with it, and you end up in this new area. It's kind of a section of what you've seen before with Menza Brands in the house quest. And we just have to beat up a Baylor. He's fairly squishy, so there's not too much trouble there. But once he's dead, he disappears and you need to go speak to the NPC that came with you and she'll yeah, basically direct you on and out of this area. Keep in mind, this is all the previous server. All of this is open to change. So just be aware of that. We're all just in a testing phase. So we hand that quest back in and then we go and get a reward from Nori, who basically gave us a Menza Branzen pack just there where we have new hunt modifiers. You can see each of the modifiers there, they're missing some exact text there for the rewards that they will give and I'll showcase a table just when I've explained the hunts of what rewards they will actually give you. But you can see it's gonna cost you 10,000 astral diamonds to unlock each of these. Here on the previous era, not such a concern. It's 10,000, 50,000 and then 75,000 in order to get them unlocked and maxed out. I assume when they're maxed out, they'll give you the most amount of the reward that they would give you. Again, there's no specifics on the exact rewards they're giving yet, just a bit of text there, which is a little bit odd. But we go, we max out all of them. We need to test what they actually give us. And the quests we have now is Abyssal Magic and the Demon Web. We need to go to Abyssal Tears and these magic wards. We just go interact with them, north, south, east, and west, and then killing these group of enemies, we can interact and seal the tear. That's both quests completed and we head back. So with that, we are getting to the end of the story quest of this week one. But you are directed to the main hub area of this zone. That's right here. It's a safe zone and you have the main NPC there who's now going to give us, yeah, repeatable quests to make progress further on the campaign. We got some three weekly quests there. And at this point, we can start doing our abyssal hunts. You will locate them through these icons on the map. They're for you personally. You can only go in them alone. You can mark one of them like this with a waypoint and it'll help you massively to navigate where to go because 
a new zone. It's really confusing the map as well with all these side streets up and down levels. But this is what you will be doing repeating over and over. Now you will be time gated on how often you can do this as these tears when we do complete it will only respawn every about 30 minutes and once you entered in you will be able to select this thing this crystal and choose a modifier you can see there's nine different modifiers similar names as we've had with dragon hunts but each one will give a differing reward and you can see right now i can only put one modifier and that is because we are in a lesser abyssal hunt there are standard abyssal hunts and then there are also greater abyssal hunts. We'll showcase that in a minute, but this boss, we're fighting a phase spider. It shouldn't be too much trouble. With a maxed out character here, we can do a substantial amount of damage to it and kill it in, yeah, under a minute at least. Again, you will have to do these things solo. You won't be able to go and team up with players to do this so newer players might have a bit more of a struggle and have to use a bit of potions again it would depend on what modifiers you're using as well but you can see we used resilience and we obtained some campaign currency this fabrish favor which for the new campaign is the demon web pits the currency that you will use in the store to get your key to get vanity pets enchantments insignias and also to upgrade your gear and buy the new gear very similar the same currency as you'd get with like menza branson and also the north dark reaches all similar same kind of uses and you get it through heroic encounters but at least here you can use a modifier and you can obtain a lot more of it now if you look back on your map you have other abyssal hunts and the one we just did is disappeared again it will be about 30 minutes before it appears again so we have these lesser abyssal hunts we have a standard abyssal hunt and we have one greater abyssal hunt they will always spawn in these locations so now we'll go to the greater one and the tear itself will be much bigger as it's to represent that yeah it's a bit greater challenge Again, all of this is still open to change as it's the preview server. So with our greater abyssal hunt, we can now choose three different modifiers. You see that on the right side. So we'll choose like resilience, rotating chaos and denied. We'll ready up with that. It's just ourself here. No waiting for any teammates. You won't be able to enter these greater ones with other players either. But the only benefit of a greater one will be that you can run three of those modifiers at once so again we enter our arena and here we fight another beholder in what looks like a place of sharandar now i'm gonna have to report this bug as this doorway gets pretty bugged out here and there we go we entered in finally but this one a bit more challenging because we don't have mount and daily powers and we don't have consumables so uh, let's avoid those red zones now each of the abyssal tears will have a different boss this one is the eye tyrant the one before we had a face spider and it's not dependent on the challenge level whether it's lesser standard or greater you will just always fight one at random and you can see the different rewards we got from the different modifiers there we got some abyssal fragments for the campaign currency we got some more of the favor and we also got now some trinkets now you will additionally get a chest which all it can ever drop you is some rough astral diamonds and some abyssal fragments the greater ones will give this exact amount with the lesser giving only like 1150 and the standard giving 1320 and 60. again those currencies are important for the campaign getting gear vanity pets insignias and enchantments so after completing it again the icons disappeared and we could head to the next one that be a standard hunt now you may be wondering what modifiers should you be choosing which ones should you be upgrading well it's not exactly finalized yet but i have made a picture here where you can see each of the modifiers and the rewards that they currently give again this is the previous server open a change the first one gives us those trinkets which i'm still actually not sure what they do ferocity very nicely will give you campaign currency for menza branson you have the elite sigils the glyphs of warding and the menza branson mint that's the three main currencies you need for that campaign 
to, yeah, get all your rewards here. You'd be able to grind your abyssal hunts for, let's say, buying your keys for your enchantments. Each one you complete gives you six sigils, 20 glyphs, and four mint. Might still be better farming heroics because you're limited on how many of these hunts you can do before you have to wait before they respawn, reappear again. But we can see like hindered recovery. This is where I think it's a bit bugged. It will only give you 10 silver. That's a thousand copper pieces. IT by T will give you a bunch of master work resources. You'll be able to sell these. They'll pop in your professions tab of your inventory. And these, again, you'll be able to sell and be able to use to create and craft the new masterwork stuff. But that's not all of the reagents you will need to create your items. There's then limited conditioning, which again, oddly just gives you three sapphires. I think it should give a lot more. And then pointless being really pointless with only giving 1,000 rough astral diamonds. Resilience, giving 40 of that campaign currency for the demon webs. Rotating chaos, giving 1,000 of those abyssal fragments. Again, those are needed within the demon pits campaign here. We have nearly 5,000 of them. It's pretty easy to cap it out, and I think it's a bit bugged that it's giving 1,000. It probably shouldn't. And trickery reversal will give you some more masterwork uh, items. You'll be able to again sell these and use these to craft items with the master working. So they're fairly easy to obtain and I don't think they will be very expensive. But that's all the modifiers. Now I've personally ran into a purple worm boss, this white battle commander, a drider, this eye tyrant beholder, a hezrau, a manticore, a nelfashni, the phase spider, the balor, a gristro, a neothilid, big snake-like creature, and an Umberhawk, each of them being in varying different terrain, different arenas, but you will all have the ability to place the modifiers before going in. Again, depending on the amount of modifiers based on the challenge level, from lesser standard to greater, one, two, and three. And that's about it for the Abyssal Hunts. But finally, I am just about to complete week one of the Demon Web Pits. We hand in these last two quests and that'll get us capped out those are the small repeatable ones that you have in all the other campaigns and this gives us the vigilance mask which doesn't seem to do anything it goes in our fashion section of our inventory just here clicking preview uh, just show preview only and uh, we get no visuals nothing so uh, yeah definitely bugged there hopefully they get that fixed but you will need to get to the second milestone in order to obtain your next storyline quest. And that's it. That's the preview of this Demon Web Pits campaign and the Abyssal Hunts linked with them. There'll be a bunch of modifiers, each giving different rewards, and there'll be a bit of an AD sync in order to get them upgraded. Massive thank you again to all these channel members for their added support. See you guys around. Goodbye for now.